Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Alicia, and we're going to be doing our Draw With Me class this morning. Are you excited? Me too. So we're going to be focusing all on the coral reef habitat. Now, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you can participate in a couple different ways. You can, of course, draw with me. That's, that's our class today. So if you have paper, or I'm using a whiteboard today, chalkboard, whatever you would like to draw with today, um, I'm going to be able to erase some of my drawings so I can focus on shapes and then draw back over. So if you have an eraser, a pencil, that might be helpful today. So you can draw with us. Uh, I'd love to see your pictures and you can text that in. Uh, we'll put the number at the end of our, our program as well. But you can also ask questions, share observations. And um, if you have any of those questions and you want to text in our observations, just make sure that you're asking permission from an adult as normal texting rates do apply. All right. Now, why are we doing an art class when we're learning about science? Well, art and science often mix together because in order for scientists to learn about an animal, they often have to look pretty closely and artists do the same thing. So practicing our observations, thinking like scientists today, actually helps us with our art project and our art project helps us with our science. So we can do both today, which I think is fun. Now, you don't have to be an artist. I'm definitely not an artist, but I do love to draw. And I'll tell you that your your artwork today does not have to look like my artwork. It can look completely different. There is no wrong way to make your observations and draw today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start by looking closely at the habitat behind me. Now, I've said that word a couple of times. Habitat. Let's say that together. You ready? Habitat. Good. So a habitat is a place where animals live. And not all places in the ocean are the same. So what might make this ocean habitat special? That's what we're going to look at. So if we're looking into our big reef habitat right now, what are some things that you notice? These are some things that we're going to be adding to our drawing today. Now, I see a lot of different animals. Do you see them too? Are they all the same shapes, colors, sizes? Oh, they're a little bit different, right? And so we'll have to remember that as we focus on a few animals a little bit later to draw. Now we're also looking at what they're living in, this stuff here. So this is coral. Have you heard of coral before? Well, when you have a lot of coral that lives together underwater, this is called a coral reef. Now the water here, I will tell you, is nice and warm. So when we think about a habitat, it's good to think about the, the things that are alive and the non-living things as well. So the non-living things that we're gonna include in our habitat is of course the water. And this water is different than the water that you would find in our own backyards here in California. So our water off of our coast is pretty cold, but if you were to visit a nice, a warm location like a coral reef, the water is nice and toasty. It can be, usually it's in the, in the 70s, sometimes even 80 degrees, which is pretty warm. So let's take a closer look at some coral, an example of coral. Ooh, this is our live coral habitat. So we are looking at an animal, and this animal has a really hard outside part to its body called an exoskeleton. That's a big science word for today. So these corals, let's go ahead and take a peek. What do you notice about them? If we were to start drawing some of these corals, what might we include? Hmm. Well, as you're making some observations, I wanted to show you an example of coral up close under my document camera, just to show you that they come in a lot of different shapes and what we might want to include for our own drawing. Now again, you can, you can draw what I have. You can also make your own drawing. So here's my, what we're gonna be drawing on today. I'm gonna turn the, the light down just a little bit so that we can see up close. Ta-da, maybe a little too much, there we go. And then we're gonna zoom on in so that we can see. But just to start with right now, 
are all three of these corals the same? Now, these are not live. This is that hard outside part to the coral's body. And the animals would live in the tiny spaces that we're going to take a peek at as we zoom in. Now, coral is actually related to, to jellies and sea anemones. And they are very soft animals. So if you're a really soft animal, sometimes it's nice to have a really hard outside part to your body, that exoskeleton. Ooh, I love all the, the shapes that we're seeing here. So this is that skeleton. This is a coral skeleton. So again, the coral's not alive. This is what it leaves behind. Now the coral that we are going to draw today is very colorful because it has a special partnership with an algae that lives inside its body. The algae gives the coral food by using the sun and the coral protects it with this nice hard skeleton. So I'll move over so you can see those little dots. You see those? We're gonna have to make sure that we include a few little dots when we draw our coral today. And that's gonna be an example of where you might find little tiny, again, they look kind of like sea anemones, which have tentacles and are soft. They live all of those tiny little holes, those spaces. So you can see they have lots of different shapes. Some of them are what we call branching coral. There's even a coral called, you ready for this? A tongue coral. Let's see if you think it looks like a tongue. Zoom out here. Ta-da! I don't know. It definitely is shaped like a tongue. I don't think it looks like our tongues. But there is a coral called a tongue coral. All right, let's go ahead and go back to that um, live coral habitat picture, that video for us. All right, so we can see, again, that when it's alive, it are, it's this nice, bright, colorful place for these animals to live. So there are rocks down here, and this coral uh, latches on and then starts to grow, and it's kind of like these little apartment buildings. They grow on top and stack and stack and stack, and they edge towards the sun. So we're going to go ahead and start by drawing out on our our piece here. Hopefully you've had some time to grab your your marker and our pencil as we start. And I have to remember to zoom out after we've been exploring nice and close. All right, so I'm just going to start by drawing some rocks here. Again, yours doesn't have to look like mine. I'm going to draw some rocks on that side and maybe some rocks over here on this side. Ta-da! So this is what the, um, <laughs> are we done? No. <laughs> uh, but hopefully you've had a chance to kind of draw on your rocks here. Let's go ahead and start adding some of those coral. Now, the coral that we first saw was what we call a branching coral, right? It had lots of those little branches. So I'm going to go ahead and add those in here. So some of them kind of came up and down. So again, this is the skeleton. So you can make yours however you want. Now this is gonna be a home and shelter for some of those animals. Did you start to notice some of those animals that we were seeing? Now we're gonna go ahead and add those little dots. This is where if we were to look under a magnifying glass or a microscope, or just swim up really close, you might see the animals that live in these tiny little holes. So if you were a scientist and you were the first one to find this really cool coral animal, you might want to include some of these details so that you remember for later. And that's kind of how we should think about it when we make observations. What do you want to record for later so that we remember these details about those animals? Okay, so we have our first coral here. Um, let's go ahead, and we saw some that were a little bit flatter, right? So they had, um, you can call these like our tabling. So they kind of just spread out like this. They kind of layer on top of each other. Again, you can, you can erase your little pieces in between. They're kind of these flat plate-like coral. You can add them in. They're all different shapes. You can add those little dots all over them. Ta-da! 
however you want to make your, your coral here. So we have some of those flat pieces. Now, some coral are a little bit softer. They actually call them soft coral. And I think we have our Anthias exhibit that we can take a peek at to see an example of what that soft coral might look like. So instead of having that really hard skeleton all the way around, they have a little bit more flexibility. So they, to me, they kind of look a little bit more plant-like. Again, it's an animal, but it's gonna move a little bit more with the flowing of the water going back and forth. And it's still a type of coral. Um, they're a coral relative. Oh, look, here's another type of coral. This one to me looks like a big um, vase. So lots and lots of different shapes here. This is a nice close-up. We even have, ooh, an example of brain coral down there. What shape do you notice? Yeah, kind of that circle. So maybe we'll include some of those here as, as we draw. So I'm gonna do a nice soft coral. Did you notice it was kind of wavy? Again, branching, so we can kind of add some of those here. And then it's kind of fan-like. Maybe we'll add a little bit more branching pieces here. All right, so we've added some soft coral, and then I wanted to add a little brain coral here, which is a little bit more rounded. And I think we have an, a picture of a brain coral because they get very large. I've had a special opportunity to swim in a nice warm place that had brain coral, and it was huge. It was, um, well, I, I had to swim over it. It was like this big. And it, it was probably been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Coral grows very slowly. But look at the shapes here. What do you notice? So again, what, looking closely, what might you want to include on your drawing that we see here? Pretty cool. I kind of noticed this pattern. So I'm going to draw this pattern in to my brain coral. Kind of had these nice wiggly lines. Again, your coral doesn't have to look like my coral. All right, so that's my brain coral. So we've drawn in some coral examples here. Let's start thinking about maybe the animals that could live in our habitat. Now that there's a few places to hide, maybe find some food. And those are the important parts for building a habitat, right? The animals in these homes want to be able to, to survive. So I'm going to go ahead and start with um, our angelfish. This is an animal that can be found in these tropical reef habitats. Wow, I think I have, there we go, my stuffed animal as well. So we can kind of put those in the same. And you can see they're a little bit different. Ain't, there are lots of different kinds of angelfish. They're, they're all very beautiful. Let's talk about the things that they all have in common, though. So, so if you were to look up a picture, maybe if you were to do some investigating after, you might find that they come in many different colors. The one that we're looking at right here is, is quite beautiful, right? What colors do you see? Hmm. Yeah, you probably noticed, right? We have yellow and blue. Are there any special things that we might want to include on our fish? Again, we'll go ahead and put that number up. I know a lot of you are drawing right now and are busy, but if you wanted to share, we'll put our, our text number up as we're making our observations. Now, if we were to describe the shape of our fish here, how would, how would you describe it? If we were just to draw out the body, would it be triangle, rectangle, square, oval, circle? What do you think? Hmm. While we're thinking about that, Let's go ahead and see what are some extra special things that we can put on. Well, angelfish, I know this is an angelfish because they have this special part that sticks out. Did you notice that? Yeah, so sometimes animals use color for different reasons. The angelfish is using these nice bright colors to kind of show, hey, you probably don't want to mess with me. I have this nice spike right where my gill is. So this thing right here is the gill. This is the covering. So if you're to make your best fishy face, ready? Put your hands like this. 
Excellent. So they have a covering over their gills. Now I know this is an angelfish because angelfish have these little spikes that come out. So when you make your fishy face, you can go boop. There you go. You've added your, your spikes to your gills and that makes it a, an angelfish fishy face. So they also have this mask, which makes it a little hard. And then look at over here. They have a fake eye. Now we're pretty smart. We can tell that that's not a true eye, but think about it. You're a predator. You're hunting in some of these closer places around the reef. It's a little bit dark. You may not notice that this isn't the actual eye of the fish. So again, we talked about different ways to use color. So color can be used to show off to each other. It can be used as a warning. It can even be used to show uh, or to trick a predator. And so how does this work? Well, if you think a fish is going to go this way, but then it goes this way, that can be pretty helpful, right? Can you imagine? Have you ever played tag and you are running really fast and you kind of pretend you're going to go one way and then you go the other? Yeah, that's pretty much what the fish are doing. Oh, good observations, Logan. Logan said dots and lines. Yeah, so there's a lot to color in here today. I'm not going to have time to draw or to color in all of these beautiful colors, but I wanted to spend a little time so that you could remember and then you can add in those, those really um, colorful pieces. So Isaac said, uh, oh, Isaac is adding a puffer fish. Good job, Isaac. Do you want to see my puffer fish impression? I think it's pretty good. You ready? <laughs> yep, that's my puffer fish impression. You can do one too. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> what am I adding? Ah, these spikes. So this is one of the <laughs> puffers that we have here at the aquarium. So if you're gonna add in some of your own fish, this is an excellent one. This is one that's not puffed. How would you draw it? And what shape do you think it would be once it puffs and it has spikes? We'll see if we have some time to maybe add a puffer fish because those are pretty fun. All right, we'll go back to our angel fish here because we're gonna go, and I love those observations. So you probably have noticed there's almost like a rectangle shape to the body. And then we can kind of add, we're gonna add this face. We're gonna add a, what we call a broad tail. So it's kind of this nice fan shape to it. We're gonna make sure we add fins at the top and the bottom that come out pretty far. My, my plush here has pointed fins, but you'll see that my picture are a little bit rounded. So as long as we remember to put those fins on the top and the bottom, to help with swimming. We also have fins down here and on the side. So let's go ahead and we're gonna move over to our drawing so that we can add in our angelfish. So this is, they can actually be a pretty good size. So again, I'm gonna start with that shape. So we'll make a rectangle here so we can kind of follow along together. And then I'm going to be able to erase this. I won't just have a, a rectangle of fins, I promise. Then I can come on down, come out for the mouth, and then come down this way. All right, did you add your little face? What am I missing? Probably need an eye. You can go ahead and add your, your eye for your angelfish. I'm going to erase my sides here. So if you have a pencil, you can do the same. I'm gonna add in that gill to breathe and then that little spike. So remember, it's an angelfish. And then at the back, we kind of said that they had fins that came around. So they go down like this. So you can kind of erase around. Actually, I'm gonna start again so I can kind of make that nice curve. And then again, a nice curve, and then we'll add that fan-shaped tail in. Excellent. We also have a fin on the side that we'll go ahead and add in. And those fins at the bottom. Ta-da! Now if you wanted to add in lines, I'm just going to do this so we remember that it's a very colorful fish. There's lots of polka dots. You can decorate your angelfish however you would like. All right, so there's our angelfish. 
I'm just going to go ahead and draw it a little bit bigger at the top. There we go. There's our angelfish. If we were to draw a puffer fish, what do you think our puffer fish is going to look like? So we'll go back to our puffer fish. I think that's a an interesting one. So they look a little bit different. I think I always imagine a puffer fish being nice and puffed out, right? <laughs> but when they're not puffed out, they kind of have these long oval shaped bodies. And we can, we can, you can draw them either way. We might want to try them puffed out because I think it's kind of fun. But we'll make sure that we put the fins on on the side. And then what do you notice about the face? They have these nice big eyes. They also have these mouths that stick out. And believe it or not, they have teeth in there that are pretty hard. They can crunch up some hard, uh, harder shelled animals with those teeth. So Gage, um, just to take a pause, Gage in Colorado says, do groupers eat angelfish? Oh, you know, groupers are big animals. They can be a, a pretty big fish. We have a Queensland grouper that um, we can take a peek at a little bit later. So after we draw our puffer fish, we'll take a peek. And uh, once we see the see this fish, you'll probably get an answer for <laughs> if they eat angelfish or not. All right. So if we were, I don't, I don't think I've tried drawing a puffer fish before, but we'll get creative here. <laughs> we'll see if we can do one. So probably that nice. So again, we wanted to try one that was puffed. So it has that circle, has that nice big eye in the front. It had a, a pretty good size fin on the side and it has fins on the top and the bottom. And then what do you think we should include? What was special about that puffer fish? Yeah, it had spikes on its body. You don't wanna mess with the puff, puffer fish. Ta-da! That's my puffer fish. Again, it looks very different than when it's not puffed. All right, so another animal, let's see, we have a, a, a few more minutes here. Another one that I think is really fun is the clownfish. Were you thinking of the clownfish when you were thinking? Ta-da! All right, so this is a, I think a really popular animal, probably because, um, well, it's had some <laughs> TV time, but also uh, look at those colors, right? So it has these nice bright colors. Remember when we were talking about color being used in different ways? Yeah, so sometimes animals use colors to blend in. Are the clownfish here blending in? Not really. <laughs> They're kind of saying, look at me. So they could be saying, look at me to impress each other. Sometimes they're saying, look at me to give a warning. Sometimes um, even stripes are used. So having these nice, um, I should say bands down the top and bottom of their, their body are easier to see from far away. So even little shrimp out there have bands on them. Having bands and stripes are, are really easy to see sometimes in the coral reef. So they're not, they're not a huge fish, they're, they're about this big. But if you have these nice bright colors, and you live in this really cool sea anemone. Now this is my sea anemone impression here. Sea anemones, thank you. I have um, Allie and Allie helping me today. I have two Allies. <laughs> I have Allie who's helping with my controls and Allie who's helping with your questions and observations this morning. So this is a sea anemone example. So sea anemones have this nice round body. And then what do you notice on the outside of their body? What stands out to you? What makes them a cousin to a jelly? Ooh, or a coral. This is what we were talking about. Did you notice the tentacles? Now these tentacles aren't just for show. These tentacles sting. Now if you were any other little fish, you wouldn't want to get close to a sea anemone. So a clownfish has a really, here we go. Let's see if we can go back to our, aha, perfect. So the clownfish, they're pretty fun. I like that they have up close little grumpy faces. Did you know that? 
<laughs> yeah, look at that grumpy face. I love fish with grumpy face. They're not grumpy though, I promise. They just have grumpy faces. So this is another type, also different colors, um, but also kind of using those bands to stand out. And then it's wiggling around in this stinging animal. How does it do that? You wanna hear the secret? Kind of cool and gross. Yeah, it's covered in a layer of slime. Kind of like mucus. Yeah, don't think about that too much. So that's all over the fish. And it's, it's pretty similar to what the, the, the anemone has around its body. And so the anemone doesn't even know that the clownfish is there. And so the clownfish gets to hide. And if it needs to, it comes out and protects its anemone. Um, it will grab smaller food that passes by. Sometimes it even passes it to the center where the anemone that it's living can eat. Pretty cool. All right, so if we were to draw this partnership, this is another partnership. We learned about the coral and the algae. This is another partnership between a fish and the anemone. Let's go ahead and draw that in. So we're gonna need to draw a sea anemone, um, and we're also gonna need to draw our clownfish. Let's go back to our clownfish photo so that we can kind of get a closer look with those orange. There we go. So looking at this model here, our fish is this nice oval, it has a point on one side, and it kind of gets small here, and then we'll add in this nice broad tail. We're going to make sure that we include two fins on the top, one, two, and we have several fins on the bottom that are kind of nice and round. So compared to our other fish, they have nice rounded fins. So we'll go ahead, let's see where we can add in our clownfish here. Maybe we'll draw our clownfish swimming in front of this rock space here. So I'm gonna draw that nice, we call fusiform, which is the oval. We're gonna make sure that we include that little mouth. Again, not really grumpy, just has a little grumpy face. You're gonna wanna draw your nice broad tail. This is another fish that has a nice broad tail on it. And then they have stripes. So if we're to think about our stripes here, they have one. The second one is kind of interesting. It kind of does this little keyhole thing two, and then three. Has a little rounded fin here, and a little rounded fin on that side. Now, we wanna make sure that we can do that side. There we go. Our little side, where's my eraser? Again, you can just erase where you need to. I like to draw my lines first. We'll make a little space for that side or pectoral fin. Then we can add our little fins down here. I'm gonna fix my dorsal fins just a little bit. All right, so there's my clownfish. We even have this little they have those nice lines on their body. Again, you can color those in so it's a little bit easier to see. And then they live in a sea anemone. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a nice sea anemone. We'll pretend that it's a nice big sea anemone. So I'm gonna draw that circle. They have a little mouth on the inside. And then they have those tentacles. So you can draw your clownfish anywhere you want around your sea anemone. And the ones in the tropics can be really pretty. Okay, ta-da. You can add some around your coral reef. When they close up, they kind of look like little buttons to me. I think they're pretty cute. You can get little sand and stuff on them. Now we're looking up close at the At the coral reef, we might even see some animals 
that have no bones. So we've been talking about the anemones, but there are lots of little critters up close. Sometimes we can find little crabs. You wanted to add little crabs to your drawing. There's even special coral crabs that live just inside coral, which I think is kind of fun. All right, so we've drawn quite a bit in our habitat. We've only really just started. There are so many different kinds of animals that use the coral reef as their home. Not only are the coral animals themselves, and we've drawn a few of those in here, there's lots of fish, there are eels. Maybe we'll go back to one of our um, views of our tropical, there you go, our, our tropical habitat. Okay, we had talked, Gage had asked about the um, Queensland grouper, or the groupers, in, in fact. We're looking at this far away, but if a scuba diver were in here, you'd see that this is a really large fish. And this really large fish has a really, oh, hello, unicorn fish. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't mention you. Um, and there's a really big mouth, and that mouth is a vacuum cleaner. And I wouldn't say that the Queensland grouper cares if it's a, you know, <laughs> a smaller fish or an angelfish. As long as it can fit in its mouth, it's going to try. Now, if the, if the fish can flare its gills out and poke on the sides of the, the grouper, it may have a chance to get away. The grouper may not want to close its mouth on those spikes on the side. Um, but I would say that the, the grouper might, might try. Um, what helps is the angelfish has that nice pattern on it. So the, the grouper, if it's already tried before and then remembers it's going to get this spike, uh, it may not do it again. So that's having those nice bright colors. That works for all kinds of animals, frogs, uh, fish, um, animals that have a, a little secret weapon. They, they try to advertise that. So if we go back to our, our drawing here, there is an opportunity for you to add all kinds of animals. Now, I know um, someone had asked, I think, to, to draw a couple other animals in here. And I'm sorry, we've run out of time. But guess what? You can always watch our webcams and draw in some of the animals that we didn't get a chance to do, right? There are so many in here that have different shapes, different tails, even our sharks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that number up again. We would love to see your artwork. Yeah, so if you feel um, like you'd like to share with us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, you can text in your work at 562-286-1838. I hope you've enjoyed our class today. We have lots of classes coming up for the rest of the day and the rest of the week. Thank you, everybody.